Good afternoon, everyone. A second set of verification on our reduced solar activity, putting us into a mini ice age. By 2030, Ulysses and Swoops. This follows on the heels of the 60% reduction in solar activity article released by the Royal Astronomical Society. Dynamic pressure decreases of nearly 22% over a couple of solar cycles. We show zero solar wind by 2030. This will affect the atmospheric circulation. We can reconstruct that. The new report by the State of the Climate, the Little Ice Age in Maunder Minimum. Look at how exactly those match up. We'll take a look at the four things you can expect as we transition into a mini ice age. Things such as snow in Hawaii in July. Snow north of Brisbane. Nearly freezing temperatures pushing up to 20 degrees south latitude. Kangaroos hopping around in the snow. New Zealand breaking record cold temperatures across the country. In places like South Africa, two national roads closed indefinitely due to heavy snowfalls. A couple of weeks ago, Professor Valentina Zorkova came out talking about a 60% reduction in solar activity. That's not talking about a decrease of 60% in sunspot activity. That is a decrease in solar activity. Do not let the media confuse you. After that, the media immediately went into damage control, saying that that's impossible, it won't happen, everybody that's talking about this is some kind of loon that should be locked up. Here we go. Second verification of a solar shutdown. Ulysses in swoops. This stretches from 1993 to 2010. Notice the decrease in solar wind pressure. What you're really focusing in, yellow box that shows the dynamic pressure. This is the solar wind pressure itself. A 22% reduction in just a little over 10 years. I'll bring you over to Rolf Weish. When we get to 0% solar wind pressure, this is going to have a drastic dynamic effect on our climate. This also, the date for this is 2030. When we get into the solar minimum, what can you expect? When the solar wind decreases, you're going to expect a large influx of cosmic rays, and those cosmic rays will act as nuclei to create more clouds. The sun rays will be deflected off the cloud surfaces. Also look for a gigantic increase in volcanic activity as well as earthquakes. And when we look over larger stretches of time, back 2 million years, it looks like a regular heartbeat. The only way that this can possibly be explained is through electrical conductivity. Everything that's happening now, we are about to enter a new scientific era where the electric universe it was a theory. It's about to be proven correct. This solar shutdown is going to have more effects than one on our lives economically, as well as the way we produce agricultural products on this planet, but science itself is going to be re-evaluated and redefined. The only thing that could possibly explain the variation in the temperatures across these millions of years would have to be electrical conductivity through a plasma medium in space that reaches our star called Birkeley currents that affect the way our star is charged and the output from that. And those of you that may disagree, you cannot really explain how below the photosphere it is darker and cooler than the surface of the sun. That makes no sense. If it's an internally combusted star with fusion from inside out at the core, the inside could not possibly be cooler and darker. It should be brighter and hotter. Also, there should be no variation coming across from an internally combusting star. Externally would explain the variations. And when you look at this 2 million year chart, that actually does look like an electrical wave coming through. And the naysayers are going to come out right away and talk about orbital eccentricity. And I'm going to cut them off at the pass. There's only two primary orbital cycles that we go through, an elliptical and a circular. And those are on 96,000 years or 413,000 year cycles. Now, if our scientists can't pin it right now and say, hey, we're entering a 96,000 year cycle. We're going on the elliptical orbit. So I'm going to cut you off at the pass and say, this is the true distance from the sun, and we're actually getting closer to the true circular orbit right now, not the elliptical orbit. 1850s up to 1900, we were at 0 .007. That calculates into 65,000 miles. And over the next 200 years, it's calculated that we're even going to get closer to the sun. It's going to, that 65,000 miles is going to go down to 37,000 miles. You can take a look at where Helios is, where Ulysses is, swoops. All those things are matched up by color, so you can stop and take a look at the energy flux, how it's in a decreasing pattern. This decreasing pattern matches up with the cosmic rays, with the solar wind, 
when there's less sunspots, there's more cosmic rays. And we are going into an absolute zero sunspot count for at least 20 years here. And if you want to see how the cosmic rays are flowing in different phases of the sun, take a look on the right, active sun. This is in German. You see how it's scattered when the active sun it deflects cosmic rays and scatters them. Slumbering sun or decreased sun, you'll notice the magnetic field's not as strong, so the cosmic rays can be more concentrated to enter into our atmosphere. This backs up with the Ulysses orbits. What kind of effects can you expect in our atmosphere? Take no further look than at Jupiter, top 1995, bottom 2014. Notice how the atmospheric patterns are shifting. The atmosphere of Jupiter is also showing gigantic changes. I wonder what kind, they're probably be like 5,000 foot rainfalls there or something super deep, you know? That's a huge planet. Just like on our own planet, we're seeing extensive, extensive flooding, massive snowfalls, rains, three feet of hail on the equator, two feet of rain over in Hong Kong, eight feet of snow at one time in Italy, southern Italy over the last winter. Now you got 100 inches dropping in Chile. Expect five times more rainfall and snow during this minimum. See those clouds? Those are going to actually increase and thicken and fill themselves into just one giant cloud mass. Those of you that need visual information to absorb, here you go. 1992 to 2008, magnetic field of the sun decreasing. Solar winds cooler as well as 20% less dense. Galactic cosmic rays increased by 20% during the same time. Like I spoke in the beginning of the video, you're going to expect more earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. Here's just a small list so far. Fold is exponential amount, so 14 times more earthquakes in the United States, 15 times more earthquakes in Canada. And there's been even more. These numbers are a bit old from last year's research. It's actually even gone up since then. Taking a look at Rolf's research here, when we come down to 2030, there's going to be no solar wind. Collapses in Chinese dynasties, smaller time frame on the temperature reconstruction. But again, the only way the variability of temperature can be explained is through the electric universe. I highly suggest you look up the electric universe and see how this is affecting our star. It's not CO2. It's not us. It's the sun, it's the universe, it's the actual magnetic and electrical flow in all existence around us. I'd like to thank one of my viewers who would like to remain anonymous, who sent me a regional atmospheric circulation shift reconstruction map from GeoMar. How did they come up with this information? They used lake core sediments, tree rings, and ice cores from Greenland. What they did was come up with a reconstruction of how, over the last couple solar minimums, atmospheric circulation surface temperatures and precipitation has changed in the European continent area, including Greenland. There's two sets of data. Here we go. ERA reanalysis as well as CESM. Take a look yourself. You got two sets of data that correlate and overlap and show the exact same surface temperature drops as well as precipitation increases due to cloud activity from cosmic ray increases. Atmosphere is starting to shift just like you saw on Jupiter. We are going to get grander shifts as we go in here crazier weather, more tornadoes, more water spouts, more hail, more wind, more snow, more rain, more floods, more everything. It's already started last year. It's going to intensify. As well, matching up data, the state of the climate came out claiming the warmest year ever by probably 0 0.002 degrees Celsius or something. But here we go. I'll match this up with the Maunder minimum temperature reconstruction and show that North America fits exactly to the T perfectly what happened during the modern minimum? As well as on the right side, the smaller circle above Norway into the Arctic Circle, notice it's starting to warm up there as well. Now, all that data I've just shown you, that's great, nice, and fine. But here, what does it mean for us on the ground in the real world? It means snow in Hawaii in the middle of July. Mauna Kea receiving several inches. Yeah, sure, it's above 10,000 feet, but it's the middle of summer and it is Hawaii. It's in tropical latitudes. It shouldn't be snowing at that latitude, at that height, even in the middle of July. It just shouldn't be snowing like that. As well, record cold temperatures. The light, light aqua blue is where the coldest temperatures were in Australia, pushing up toward 20 degrees south latitude. Kangaroos jumping around in the snow. And here's the latitude map for Australia. Once you're getting around 12 degrees latitude, notice that is Indonesia there. 
So those cold temperatures pushing up toward Indonesia. Snow, heavy snow near Brisbane, further north of Brisbane as well. That is tropical. Notice the palmetto trees in the shots here that I'm about to show you. Unusual freezing, let's say that. Kangaroos jumping through the vineyards covered in snow. 30 centimeters is a full foot in Sydney. Again, you get these tropical palmettos covered in a foot of snow. Jumping across the media here, you're going to start to see repeated pictures of snow and people talking about how unusual it is. These snows are going back to the 1940s in Australia. Again, a repeating pattern. Over to New Zealand, temperature records broken across the country as well as snow depths. Taking a look here on the false color, New Zealand, North Island, you can still see red all the way north there. That's unusual snow and ice. Coldest temperatures since the 1950s, 40s there. When you jump over to the New Zealand Herald, look at the amount of front page stories that have popped up about cold and weather. When there's that much coverage of these events of cold and snow in the national media, you know something definitely unusual is happening. Wellington brought to a standstill due to road closures. As well would be expected, all the other countries and continents in the Southern Hemisphere would be affected. If it's getting colder, it's not going to be regionally. It's going to be hemispheric. Here we go. Two national roads closed indefinitely due to heavy snowfalls in South Africa. There's all kinds of things happening over in South America. I just don't have time to cover all that except for a separate video about the 102-inch snowfalls in Chile. It's just nonstop. This thing's in play now. It's going to get more intense. The media is going to try to deflect you from even looking into it because they can't explain it away any longer. When it comes back to this year's northern hemisphere and it starts to snow in, say, September and ruin our crops, the event's happening, but the media is pushing back harder trying to get you not to look at it. Do your own independent research. Dig deeper. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And I'll keep the stories coming to you.